Good afternoon. Well, today Russia's parliament began the process of approving Putin's illegal seizures of four Ukrainian territories. Now, this move, as we saw in the earlier report, has received international condemnation and global leaders are refusing to acknowledge this illegal land grab. The U.S. announced new sanctions following this development. And we should note that Russia, at least in Putin's eyes, has now laid claim to approximately 15 percent of Ukrainian territory. But this afternoon, the Kremlin announced that it had not yet formalized the borders for two of the regions that it has seemingly annexed. I'm talking about Zaporizhia and Kherson. Um, this is seemingly because Russia no longer has control of these territories, at least full control, despite what Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to say. Uh, we saw on Saturday that Ukrainian forces liberated the key city of Liman, which has dealt a strategic and psychological blow to Russian forces. As this news surfaced, criticism of Putin in Russia has really been mounting. And this loss, the city of Liman, has been called a significant political setback. Now, here in Ukraine, President Zelensky last night made an address on social media where he thanked Ukraine's military and, quote, warriors, thanking them for regaining control of this transportation and logistical hub. And I just want to go back to this mounting criticism of Putin. You know, it really began when he announced the partial mobilization in his country. And what started as protests in Moscow and St. Petersburg quickly spread across the country to really far-flung regions. So following the strategic blow, we will see how it unfolds in Russia in the coming days in regards to Putin's loss in Ukraine. All right, Shelby Wilder, thank you. And thank here with reaction is the former Moscow and Paris correspondent for The Wall Street Journal, Craig Kopitas, plus Newsmax contributor, retired Air Force Brigadier General and U.S. Deputy Military Representative to NATO, Blaine Holt. Uh, they join us now. Uh, Craig, let me start with you. Um, your reaction to what Shelby was sharing about the latest in Ukraine? Well, Putin has always had the uh, potential to play the nuclear card. Uh, you know, he can do it in one of three ways, according to the people I've spoken with who are experts. A high-altitude electromagnetic pulse blast over the Ukraine that would deep fry electronic systems there and in Europe. He could do a low-altitude detonation, kill tens of thousands of people, uh, or the so-called ground burst, <clears throat> where the prevailing winds would carry the fallout uh, helter-skelter around the globe. And people are also concerned that he could just take out one of the <clears throat> 16 uh, nuclear power reactors in, in Ukraine, transforming the country into a, into a netherworld. That's all in broad brushstrokes, and I'm sure the general knows the math much better the, than I ever will. But the proverbial bottom line here is there'll be a lot of dead people. Um, General, to that uh, question, uh, they had sham elections there last week. So they technically, in their eyes, that's their territory. The territory they're losing now, they would say, is their land. Are they setting it up? Is this being done on purpose? Are we walking into a trap? You bet. This is the trap. Craig laid out the threat quite well, though. I'm not going to get into math on TV, never. <laughs> but, but what I would say is, <laughs> um, what I would say is, if you recall the Shanghai Cooperation Organization meeting, they wanted Putin to get that off ramp for this war. This is his selected path to do that. He locks in gains, freezes a conflict, threatens the West with uh, weapons of mass destruction. That doesn't mean he won't use them, because on the other side, unfortunately, you've got. Uh, Zelensky, who has no off ramp, he, he his people will take him out if he doesn't continue to prosecute the attacks to liberate these regions. So the the whole entire danger has come up. The process in Russia is not done. Shelby did a great job reporting that today the Duma will approve it. Putin will sign it tomorrow, <clears throat> likely, and then they'll start to react as if that really is Russia, and then we will see what spectrum of warfare they want to bring to this. Mm. Yeah. Craig, I want to go back to you here. I know you wrote an article about the likelihood of Putin using nuclear we weapons. Now, he we recently sent out a train uh, capable of carrying a nuclear device. We also saw that submarine that Michael Grimm showed us about. Uh, should Americans be concerned about this? I mean, is this potentially going to be um, a, a nuclear war, uh, World War III? Many people in Europe would, would argue that World War III has already started, but this is obviously not the uh, forum to go into that. 
I think the big takeaway here, particularly with the anniversary of the Cuban Missile Crisis coming up, is that the United States and Russia have forgot the nomenclature of, of brinkmanship. Uh, in, in the old days, when I used to cover the Soviet Union, uh, this type of thing resembled a calculated chess match. What we see on display now is more like the old television game show, Truth or Consequences, in which animosity has replaced probity with both contestants intimating horrific repercussions. We really didn't kind of see that in, 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 in the bad old days uh, when, uh, as Reagan said, uh, trust but verify. There's no way to do that nowadays. General, how does this end? So I couldn't agree with Craig more about uh, where we're at and the dearth of diplomacy that we see. Um, you know, the, the pipelines have been uh, knocked out. Turk Stream just came down today from Europe. We're going to see an irreversible crisis in Europe that's going to be just a catastrophe. And we should be worried not just about nuclear weapons, but things like EMP pulses, a cyber attack, banking takedown, infrastructure takedown, transatlantic cable cutting. The time is now for Americans at home to get into civil preparedness, take care of your needs, food, water, shelter, your community. Uh, we are in very serious days. Well, that's a very somber note to leave it on. Uh, just to sum it up in a sentence or two, General, you would say Americans need to pay more attention to this than they are? Absolutely, 100 percent. You've got to watch this every day and call Washington once in a while and tell them that diplomacy is a really great idea right now, globally. All right. Craig Capitas and Brigadier General Blaine Holt. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.